Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Bosworth, and welcome to my channel. I think we are right at the top of the hour without any complications and without anything going wrong. So praise. <laughs> that was great. Uh, welcome to Sunday Nights, where I uh, lead a little lesson about a ketogenic diet, as well as take care of one of my favorite patients named Lachlan. So let's start out with doing some introductions. Uh, I'm Dr. Bosworth, and I run this channel as well as the website bosmd.com. Uh, it's there and here that I try to use these places for free education about the ketogenic diet. The support of this channel is from uh, your attention and your comments, as well as anybody who's bought the book that I wrote, Any Way You Can. Uh, this was my first kind of understanding and discovery uh, about the ketogenic diet while I coached my mom through a really critical part of her life. Um, if you go to Amazon and check out the comments online, they are amazing about how much uh, support and encouragement people have given about, about the book, what they've done after reading the book, and how many people, I would contend that 20 years of practicing internal medicine as a physician, I haven't impacted as many people as I have through this book. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I am watching some of the comments as we do this, and so I want to say thank you for those of giving a comment. Tonight is a very interesting and special um, evening. I've got a little lesson prepared for some of the um, backstory for what Lachlan has been going through. Lachlan is a patient of mine for over a decade, and about <clears throat> eight years ago now, she, as an adult, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, her body had a reaction and killed off the cells that made insulin. So now she will be injecting insulin for the rest of her life. Um, she was an adult onset type 1 diabetic and went from a pretty normal life to one that was injecting insulin way more often than she should, <laughs> as in never. But uh, that led to a, a good 100 pound weight gain over the last 10 years by encouraging her to eat carbohydrates and then give herself insulin. Eat carbohydrates and give yourself insulin. And we want you eating five to six times a day so that your blood sugar never drops and you never get hypoglycemic. And unfortunately, what we did to Lachlan is we made her overweight, we aged her brain, we caused her telomeres, her longevity markers in her DNA, to have some uh, some damage, and now we are trying to reverse that. So in January of this year, um, we started uh, Lachlan on a ketogenic diet as a type 1 diabetic. Um, we did this very carefully by doing a few things that um, I talk about in the book, but this is a much more advanced lesson about the ketogenic diet and how to help somebody in their um, on their journey for ketosis. So before we dive into that, just uh, some other routine things. I do give medical advice to Lachlan because she is my patient. This is a doctor-patient relationship, and Lachlan is incredibly gener generous with her time and with her vulnerability to show the world what it looks like to have type 1 diabetes, to be frustrated with it like most of my patients with type 1 diabetes, and then to try and challenge uh, what does it look like to cut your carbohydrates down to less than... 20 to 30 grams per day. So um, we started this journey about, uh, it's been about 12 weeks now, so we're almost three months into this story. And um, we did a few things to help uh, prepare Lachlan's brain for this transition. Uh, not only do we have uh, a normal human being here, we have one that doesn't make insulin. So most of the folks out there watching this don't have type 1 diabetes. You guys make your own insulin. Um, so this is definitely an advanced lesson about how can I take somebody who doesn't make any insulin and improve the way uh, she not only controls her blood sugar, but how can we get this 100-pound weight, weight off of her? And um, this past week, we had a huge marker in that she did a 36, actually, it turned out to be 41-hour fast. So I can't wait to tell you about it. I'm going to have her unpack that for us. Um, one, more, uh, one more housekeeping is that if you are new to the ketogenic diet and you're looking for where do I begin, it can be very overwhelming. The book is meant for beginners. It is meant for people who, who want to hear a story about a 71-year-old, that was my mom, uh, who was taking on a ketogenic diet. And then I, I layer some science in that book to, to, to teach through her journey. Um, she didn't need to lose weight. She had cancer. And so we were using ketones for a much different reason. 
but wow, she is, she reversed age from 71. I think she looks like she's in her fifties again, but anyway, she, um, that story of grandma Rose is what the book any way you can uh, teaches, but there's also a playlist in my, on this YouTube channel called all things keto. And it's in a very specific order. If you start at the top of that playlist and you work your way down, you're going to find a very basic step-by-step -step process of how do you wrap your head around this ketogenic process. And it's free. Um, I really encourage people to find a support group. I host one of those support groups here in Sioux, in Sioux Falls where I have an internal medicine practice. It's a free support group as long as you can tell me what a ketone is. So I encourage people to read the book. I encourage people to at least watch some of those videos before they uh, show up to the support group. Um, but every Friday we have uh, people zoom in as well as uh, tune in to uh, the lessons that I give to the local people in my community about how can we improve your health. Uh, last but not least is if you're starting a, a support group and you're looking for a way to not have such a heavy lift, um, you can start by reading one chapter at a time of that book. It really is a great way of, for a group to learn more, but you can also use that playlist, All Things Keto, to just be a tool uh, to help you um, uh, get yourself started on a ketogenic diet and answer a lot of the questions that I see over and over again. All right, so we are going to start by uh, bringing Lachlan into uh, the um, into the show, and we're going to go through a couple things, and then we're going to get to a pretty uh, great lesson about why she had some of the things happen that had happened. All right, Lachlan, you're alive on the air. Oopsie, <laughs> you're live on the air. I almost fell off my chair there. <laughs> like, and crash. I know it's exciting. Just calm down. <laughs> Yes. Well, last week uh, I was out of town. Uh, I was uh, closer to the equator than either of us in South Dakota ever get to be uh, in while well, staying in the border. So I headed to the beach and said, um, I was so sad I couldn't get the internet to work, but I uploaded it from uh, the beach and had a, had a great time with my husband away from the snow of South Dakota. So you, <laughs> you survived a week without a consult. Actually, we had quite a bit of consulting going on, didn't we? We did. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell people about this fast? Why, why, first of all, have you ever fasted before? I'm, well, I mean, I've done the girl thing. Every girl's like starved herself, you know, at some point in their life, Right. Okay. <laughs> but not like, not like with like intent and purpose and like really knowing what I was doing, you know? Right. Um, so okay. yeah, we, we did, um, Wednesday because you got back on Tuesday or something. So Annette said I had to wait until. Can do it when I was out of town. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, well, I'm sorry. I'm like watching my phone and my computer at the same time. And then I can't tell which one's talking. And it got confusing <laughs> for a second. <laughs> yeah. Technology. Um, and then this four minute la or whatever it is, three minutes that before we show up live, you're like, yeah, right. don't look at the phone when you're, when you're on. Cause it'll totally give you a mind warp. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. totally. I'm trying to read the comments and stuff and mm. I need to just focus. Um, <laughs> So Wednesday at five ish, we were going to start, but then I ended up having lunch with a friend early that day and we had a big lunch and then I just said, screw it. I'll just start now. So we went. So you started at two o'clock on Wednesday and yep. that wasn't that, that wasn't that tough. The, the two, the, the first day wasn't that tough. You got up no. you, and we had planned. No, that was it. Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Right. Oh yeah. Wednesday. All right. And, and we had planned it because Thursday you had a, a really full and busy day. Yes. Right. So you got up on. <laughs> so before you did that, though, you actually came home that night. You had had supper ready for the kids and you had told them uh, you had told them that you're going to fast and you have two teenage boys. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, tell me about so that. So I said I, I had to work on Wednesday night. So I told my oldest, I said, here's what's for dinner. Go ahead and eat and then put everything away because I can't have dinner tonight. And he was like, why? <laughs> I said, because I'm fasting. Why? <laughs> like for, I mean, I, Annette wants me to. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as you've got Dr. And he was so confused, like, what, why? <laughs> yeah, for his whole life, for his you know, working memory, you've had the instructions from your physicians to eat every two to three hours and to never yeah. be too far away. I mean, he's, as your oldest son especially, been informed that if mom is acting funny, get her some sugar. This is important. Uh, it's probably a low blood sugar. Uh, here's what to do, right? Right. So no food for a day or plus. 
And, right. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So let's uh, let's walk through this. So you wake up on Thursday morning and you head off, and you had some black coffee, right? Yes, I had about I had a lot of black coffee on Thursday, but um, headed off to work. And uh, well, before I left, I decided. So on Wednesday, I don't know if you guys remember about a month ago when I talked about how I run out of insulin every month. Well, that day was Wednesday again. <laughs> So um, I only gave myself 12 units of Lantus that day. Right. So yeah. Yeah, let's, just, let's just unpack it. So at the beginning of this story, when we started, we were up to almost 100 units of insulin a day when, when you included the long acting and the short acting insulin, right? Right. And when we went to a ketogenic diet, when we got those carbs less than 30, we took you to uh, long acting insulin around 55-ish. Uh, and then short acting, we had kind of a variable plan. Uh, over the course of this past two, two and a half months, we've taken that 55 down to 45 and a couple of times tried to even get to 40. And then there's this, uh, you know, mess last month where you accidentally injected twice in 24 hours, a 24 hour acting insulin. It's okay. Yeah. Lesson learned. <laughs> and so that was your only low that we've ever had. And it really was just that, that, uh, that accident of two insulin doses in a 24 hour period. So right. this month when you ran out of insulin, <laughs> your insulin's going to keep lasting longer. We're going to, it's going to be further apart that you run out. So, <laughs> right. I know, I know. Um, so I only gave myself 12 units on Wednesday and then Thursday was like the first full day that I was going to fast. And I, um, I made an executive decision and I said, I'm not going to give myself any. Right. I, I, would I was scared. I was really scared to go to work all day. I had like eight colors that day. It was craziness. There was like, it's just constant going and I'm like, I don't want to crash, but I also don't want to eat. So I'm just not going to give myself insulin and we're just going to see what happens. <laughs> right. And in all fairness for every internist out there, that was not my recommendation, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, know, sometimes it just, you know, it's seven o'clock in the morning and I don't always want to wake you up, you know, <laughs> right. You know, a text, I would be awake, but at the same time, you know, looking at what, what does insulin do? I mean, insulin is the drug that, you know, I use the, the short term, it, it insulates, it takes glucose from your circulation and it puts it in storage, whether that's in your liver, or whether that's in your fat cells, insulin insulates. Um, but in a diabetic, um, a type one diabetic, the ability to use glucose is dependent on whether or not there's insulin around. So it takes it from circulation and it puts it inside the cells. And so when it's in your blood, it can't, it can get into your brain, but it, it, mm -hmm. insulin is needed to do the next step. Uh, so your body really couldn't use the glucose if you didn't have any insulin. Now, do I, do I think you have zero insulin? You know, the, when we checked your numbers were, you had pretty strong antibodies. And so I think if you make any insulin, it's super, super, super low. So, but we didn't, we haven't checked that in over eight years. So could your body make a trickle of insulin? Maybe, but um, I would essentially say that on Thursday, the day of the fast, your body had zero insulin. Um, now, what did your sugars do on Thursday? They pissed me off. Totally. <laughs> She's like, what is I, You guys, I look, okay, so I was like going on 24 hours, almost to 24 hours in between clients, checked my blood sugar. It was like, what was it? 319. Yeah. You called me. <laughs> like, what? I was mad. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I am, I'm having lunch then. I don't even care, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, I called Annette instead. There you go. So, and what was great was you were at that point more than 24 hours since eating. So it was like three o'clock in the afternoon or 24 hours into the fast, a little further along than we had expected because you'd had a big lunch and then at two o'clock the day before and said, instead of supper, I'm just going to call it good. I feel good. And so here we are 24 hours into this fast and your sugars are over 300. Um, but at the same time, how did you feel? I felt so fine. Like I was so shocked how fine I felt. Like the only the only emotional outbursts I had were when I had that 300. And then I usually, what I've been doing lately, I feel like is, um, you know, I just have coffee in the morning and I just have like kind of one big meal ish in the mid afternoon is kind of see what seems to work for me. Right. Um, so on Thursday, when I hit like that five o'clock mark, I was kind of like, Oh, Oh, I'm really excited to go float with Annette. <laughs> 
Right. So I said, I'm going to treat you. <laughs> and then I, I, I tried to tempt you saying, let's do this. And you're like, ah, I don't think I'll need it. I'll be fine. And I'm like, no, I, I actually want you to plan on thinking about this <laughs> somewhere in the first 24 hours, uh, you know, in that, in that day of fasting. And I said, you can cancel, but I'm going to, I'm going to schedule you a float at seven after you're done with your day's work. And you had, again, a client right up till seven o'clock. So I said, all right, 7.15, we're going to meet at the float. I'm going to buy you a float and just go float with you that um, to watch. We're in separate pods, though, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So <laughs> they're great. We're, we're good friends. But yeah, there's a level, right? <laughs> uh, but again, some of the things that people don't appreciate what happened in a fast is, um, uh, number one, you can get a pretty high ketone level. And especially being a type 1 diabetic, this is a place where if we leave you unchecked for too long, you can get really high blood sugars and you can get really high ketones. You are the person who would get ketoacidosis, which is, again, when you look at some of the naysayers about the ketogenic diet, one of those naysaying is oh, you can get acidic and you can really hurt your body and you can crash and go into a coma and you can die. And the one person who can do that is actually Lackland. So this is why this is very supervised. When you told uh, several of your clients that day that you were fasting. Um, they were nervous. <laughs> they were ner They were like, are you sure you can cut my hair? Are you sure you're okay? Aren't you supposed to like eat and take insulin or, or like, is, is this like doctor recommended or why are you doing this? But I don't know if you should do this. And then I'm they like, were all, yeah. they were all worried about me and their hair. I get it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are women. We start messing with our hair and suddenly like, yeah. Um, right. So, and that's the best part of this was you could with confidence for the first time in, in eight plus years say, no, I actually feel I'm really fine. good. I feel fine. Like I'm good. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, that part is in, uh, is one of the things that I want to cover uh, on this lesson today about what's happening to her brain. Um, so I'm going to actually go on to um, uh, the place where I can, uh, let's see here, i got to click some buttons, so see what I'm doing. Um, all right, so I am going to go through some slides that I did last week, but I think they are worth repeating. So I want to remind people that we have two fuels in our brain that um, that allow us that allow our brains to function. Uh, those two fuels that we have are glucose and ketones. And when you look, the brain cannot make these fuels; it must haul the fuel into the brain. And when you look at Lackland's story, she has been using glucose as her primary fuel source for the better part of a decade. Uh, thanks to being a type 1 diabetic. Her sugars have run between 110 uh, to well over 500 when we diagnosed her. And in her system, her body had lots and lots and lots of glucose, but not so many ketones. So when we started out six, uh, 12 weeks ago now, the first thing I did to her was I put some ketones in her circulation because the transporter that uses, that takes glucose from the circulation from your blood and puts them into her brain, that's been working overtime. That's been working for 10 years and her body is insulin resistant and so is this blood brain barrier. That haul truck, that part where it takes fuel from the circulation and puts it into her brain, uh, that is your glucose transporter and it's been fatigued. It's been insulin resistant. It's been telling, being told to put glucose into the brain over and over and over again. And that's the only fuel she's been using in her brain up until 12 weeks ago. So the first thing I did is I put those little blue, uh, those little blue circles, the little blue ketone guys in her circulation. And the way we did that was we added um, I call them ketones in a can. They're called exogenous ketones. Exogenous ketones are not for everybody, but if you're struggling to get started, especially if you've had any brain troubles, like couldn't focus, trouble with uh, attention, brain fog, depression, sleep problems, um, I can go on and on from Parkinson's to multiple sclerosis. There are, I can't keep up with the number of trials coming out to look at what happens to the brain as you add ketones to the circulation. So this transporter, which has a different name, um, MC transporter, standing for, I think, a monocarboxylic transporter or something. Anyway, MC transporter, 
Um, and that is the little transporter that takes the ketones from circulation and starts to put them in her brain. Now, I knew these things were sleepy and not awake, kind of think of them as in hibernation, because there was no use for them at all in her system because her brain was all fueled on glucose with, a, with the height of her glucose um, before we started this diet. So as we look at um, what's happened to her brain over the last several, well, this, is, this, is, this slide is to show you, these are some of the things where when the brain only uses glucose, we know that glucose is a great fuel for the brain, but it should be reminded that, especially like in the case of Lachlan, her brain was swollen. She didn't know that, but she's like, oh boy, I can't believe how many things have improved from my, you know, my temperament as a parent to my focus all the way through that long of a day without food, let alone, just, but just normally that long of a day would have completely wiped me out. I would have been done at the end. Um, you know, other things that I like to point out are watch what happens to your math ability when you get fueled by ketones. Um, other things like brain injuries, concussions, your concentration, headaches, um, anger issues, memory problems, focus, all of these things have links to how your brain is functioning. And when you look at those ketones in your, um, in your circulation, the longer you expose the blood-brain barrier to ketones, what this slide shows, and it's kind of a confusing slide because that negative four goes down to negative 10. So that means as the glucose, the glucose dropped as the ketone availability increased. So these numbers- hey, are Annette, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody can see the slide that you're talking about. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Jack just texted me too. Uh, oh, seriously, he's saying the same thing. Okay, well, who knows why that's not working. Um, let's see here. Good, good save. <laughs> okay, so can, I wonder if, I wonder if they could see that one. Well, all right, so what do you think the last slide is that everybody saw? <laughs> Probably I'm, two fuels for our brain. Oh, really? Back that far? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Well, um, let's go down to this one because I can just hold that one still. There we go. All right, we're going to hold that still and I'm going to go through that again. So, um, again, what, what, what that's really looking for is um, the, the ketones um, if floating in that circulation and those, those little red squares are the glucose. So uh, you, got, you could hear me the whole time, you just couldn't see the pictures. Is that what was going on? Yeah. Okay, well, lesson learned. Um, <laughs> Larry, Larry Carbaugh wants to know how often I take the ketones. I, I drink probably two scoops of them a day. And then I also do one scoop of MCT oil at night. Yeah. So, uh, Lachlan, what, well, they can't hear you. I should, uh, I might need to fix oh. that. So Lachlan said, you know, how often does she, did she take ketones when she first started? It's a really good question. And if you see other questions, Lachlan, that they're asking, it's a really good thing to say in my ear. Um, okay. So here's what she said is when I first started her uh, treatment, I said, you know, the difference between the ketones we're going to talk about that she just did in her fast versus the ketones in a can is the ketones in a can only last for two to three hours. And so you can expose that blood brain barrier to them. And at first you're going to pee most of them out because your body hasn't seen them. But the more often that you introduce ketones into that blood-brain barrier, into that circulation, uh, the better your brain gets at transporting them into the brain. And then one mitochondria at a time, it wakes up that um, it wakes up the, the the cell from using only glucose. Uh, oh, it says they can hear Lachlan. Good job. <laughs> so they did hear that question. So when what she so what she was at asked on the comment section is how often does she use it? Every I mean, what wasn't it at least twice a day that you took it at the beginning? Uh yeah. Yep. Yep. Two and or then, three times back at the beginning. Now I just do two. Right. And so we said, I just want those ketones in your system. I mean, your sugars were over 300. So I said, it's really hard to lower your insulin without sending your sugars off the roof. All while you continue to drive a vehicle and do people's hair um, <laughs> without having them fire you. Uh, because that that brain couldn't focus. You know, this, this slide is... Um, um, very real when it comes to these are the kinds of problems that patients 
uh, really struggle with is they have tremors, they can't focus, their, their migraines are off the chart. And if you, you go back and take a list of some of the things that were annoying to, to Lachlan, these are definitely part of that struggle that she has uh, really worked through in the last eight weeks, but in part because we took that, uh, that transporter and we cared about this. You know, when it, when it comes to uh, the, um, the blood-brain barrier, what this chart shows is if you put ketones in circulation, at first, eh, there's a few um, millimoles per minute, is really millimoles per 100, gram, 100 grams per minute. So it's like, what's the rate that they're taking ketones from the blood and putting them in the brain? And at first, the, you know, there's very few ketones present. Uh, they were using just a few ketones as they were introduced, and glucose was pretty heavy. It was That was the rate it was going into the brain was pretty heavy. But the more the ketones grew, the faster the, they transported across the blood-brain barrier, and the slower the glucose, even though the glucose was abundant, much more abundant than the ketones. And that's really what we've been biohacking Lachlan's, um, Lachlan's chemistry with. All right, Lachlan, I'm going to bring you back on. Uh, okay. on slide. So as, as we look back, uh, we started simply with the ketones in a can. And then I think I took you some uh, caramel flavored uh, 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 MCT to put in your, to put in your, um, uh, your coffee. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. And really it's this funky special kind of fat that uh, your body doesn't have to digest, it can just absorb. So that's really funky. That's only a very special size fat can do that. And it goes through something called the portal vein. The portal vein goes right, it actually ports, ports uh, food right into the liver. That's where it gets its name, portal vein. And bam, those mitochondria uh, in your liver starts taking that fat and it doesn't store it as glucose, it makes all those into ketones. Um, so it's a really good, again, hack where your body wasn't making any ketones when we started. We put some in with ketones in a can, but they only last a couple of hours. So you got to either be sipping on them all day long or dose them three times a day. Either way, we kind of wake up a little bit of that blood brain barrier. Then we added some MCT and we put that in your morning coffee. And now we've got your liver making ketones. But once again, it only makes ketones for like every four to five, you know, four to five hours is how long it will raise those ketones with an MCT. And now uh, we did something remarkable, which was we said, let's take her body and deprive it of all glucose coming in for 36 hours and watch to see. <laughs> I wasn't planning on no insulin, but uh, so your sugars went up. But what did your ketones do during those? Um, I think it was you texted me. Was it Friday morning right before you? eight, you checked your ketones. Yes. They went up too. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. 1.9. Which was I didn't eat. I didn't drink any of the hydro hydrogenized, <laughs> whatever that word is, ketones the day before. Yeah. So yeah, the, yeah, the exogenous ketones, you didn't have any mm -hmm. of those during your fast. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, and there's been times where you went to one meal a day where I said, it's okay when you're not eating, you can still supply your body with either those ketones in a can or have your coffee that has the MCT in it. And the whole time I'm boosting the ketones that are in your blood to try and keep the fuel steadily delivered to your brain so that you do not have any hypoglycemic event. You have no times when your brain says, hey, the sugar's too low, I can't fuel it. We have a backup plan for your fuel, which has been ketones. And we don't have it for a couple of days. You've done this for three months. And now we took away food for, actually, that's not, uh, 41 hours. <laughs> 41 hours. So on Friday, when you went to eat, uh, tell, okay, talk, talk about the first food that so you you got up on Friday morning what was your do you remember your sugar um yes time out real quick I would like to answer this girl's comment okay um she says it's little bricks closet um she needs help with grocery lists and things for keto that's cost effective um I searched a lot of things on Pinterest there's a lot of grocery lists for starters on there I know Annette's got things on her channel here and then your friend, what's her name with her cookbook? Yeah, Jennifer Marie wrote a cookbook yes. that has... She's got great recipes too. Mm -hmm. If you sign up to pre-order her and cookbook... And I'm going to be really honest, Lil Bricks Closet, 
I feel like eating ketogenic actually saves you money in the long run. Of course, you have to like stock up with some things in the beginning, but in the long run, you're way ahead. I feel like. Yeah. You know, the part that I thought saved me money too, was that I have teenage kids. And when we were, before we were ketogenic as a family, um, the, the snacking was so much of, of their life. Now they don't snack. They really don't snack outside of a few times after school that it's, it's not like the constant, I pick them up from school. And if I don't have something for them to eat, they get crabby. Right. It really isn't the case. So you, right. you think, okay, those are just these wasted calories and these wasted dollars because yeah. <laughs> you're eating them yeah. only to it's be the end. Right. And, and it's just making you sick. So Friday morning I woke up and I was like, really excited to make some bacon <laughs> and um, I have my delicious coffee that I like to have. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm making my bacon and eggs and drinking my coffee. And then I like could barely eat very much breakfast because it was really full, really fast. <laughs> it, 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 so yeah, it's amazing to me when I ever I had, I had fasted for the first time, I kept thinking I was going to eat this huge meal. And then yeah. it like, if, especially if you drink something like, like I have the coffee absolutely is what, what I did too. And I couldn't believe like, okay, I'm really not hungry. Two pieces of bacon and I'm really done. Uh, right? Yeah. And, and then, so then you, you had a nice meal that night with your friend though, celebrating that. Yes. That, I got off work and I was like, okay, no, I'm hungry. No, I'm really hungry now. <laughs> and how much insulin did you give on Friday? On Friday? Uh, like the Lantus? Yeah. You, this was your first um, day of having the pen back. Um, 40. I had 40, 40, 40 units. Mm -hmm. And I did 40 Saturday and 40 today. Okay. So what, what's remarkable is, so every time people do a fast, Yep. especially in a situation like yours where you are keto adapted, you've got a system where the mitochondria know what to do with a ketone. Um, but you you had hit a nice rhythm where you were eating one meal a day and your sugars and ketones were pretty stable. And really what was frustrating to you is you, you hadn't lost any weight. Um, part of that is years of having insulin resistance and saying, I'm sorry, you have so much storage in your liver and in your muscle cells that every time we lower your insulin, it lets out a bunch of glucose that's been stored for so long, but it really doesn't give you the, the what we call lipolysis, meaning the breaking down of your fat to fuel your body. So um, you have this 30, you have this 41 hour fast. Uh, and that was, again, started Wednesday, ended Friday morning. Uh, you had two nights of sleep. So that's the, that's the trick to do a 36 hour fast is you, you have supper ish. You actually had a kind of mid afternoon and then slept. And then again, doing the float the second night, very helpful. gives you a, gets you, keeps you away from the kitchen, shuts your brain down, adds some magnesium, which can be really unsettling if they don't, um, if they're low on that. And then you lost weight. So tell, hello. <laughs> I, I have a teenage boy trying to, trying to go to the gym. Say hi to Jackson. <laughs> hey Jackson. <laughs> so, you know, uh, tomorrow is April fools. Um, so there's I know that was, that, that was Mr. Jackson's uh, due date. Oh, was it? Yep. That'll teach he him. came out on the 14th though. <laughs> oh, he made you wait another two weeks. Yeah, he did. Turkey. It's been demanding from before birth. <laughs> but we sure love him. Payback, payback. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> April Fools tomorrow. Uh quite the uh uh that's the job, a mom's job to make sure that that's highly uh highly anticipated. I can't even wait to hear what you have in store. <laughs> oh, it's been great. My kids are so uh on edge. And <laughs> I have a foreign exchange student that lives in our house right now. I told them about last year's a uh, big uh, April Fool's joke, which was I took a turkey, it was on Easter, and I had stuffed a Cornish hen inside the turkey, and I was teaching them how to carve a turkey, and I'm oh. like, oh my goodness, <gasps> the turkey is pregnant! <gasps> the turkey had a, we cooked the baby turkey! <laughs> And I'm like, I had them solid. And I had them on film. And they're like, wait, birds don't give 
live birth. They lay eggs. <laughs> Mom! Wait, wait a second here. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't, I'm really worried about how, yeah, they're old enough now that they're pranking me. So just a little nervous. Oh yeah. Okay. You're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the weight loss. What was your weight loss? I lost eight pounds. Yes. That's the, that's so amazing. And now you're four days, you know, three days after the fast has been broken and did the weight come back on? It did not. Yes. So that is powerful. That is a keto. Adaptive. Every other time I've starved myself in the past, you know, whatever you lose, you gain right back. Right. And all you're doing when you fast uh, from a glucose heavy diet to, you know, that starvation stuff is you're getting rid of a lot of water weight. And of course, then they eat carbs when they get back on the diet, you know, then they stop their starvation and then that just puts the water right back on. So in this case, no, 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 the water weight's been gone for a while. And you've noticed that you've said, boy, I can't believe how much better my rings fit and you know, the, just how I feel less achy. And so your fast, especially when you didn't use any insulin, uh, tapped into your fat storage. And so you emptied eight pounds of fat in that, uh, in that, um, uh, 36 hour, 41 hour fast. So that is such a big deal. I'm serious. Uh, I was not, I was hoping for four pounds. Uh, so it is <laughs> awesome. But then today, what was your morning fasting sugar today? 111. Yes. That's one of your best fasting sugars, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I feel like, especially coming off of where I didn't have basically any long acting insulin for two days. Right. Mm-hmm. So that the next time we do a fast, we're going to lower your long acting insulin, but we're not going to go to zero because it is really hard on your kidneys and it does really swell things up when you push the sugars that high and then we come back down. So, <laughs> but I get it. It's really hard to say, wait a minute, you're going to say no, uh, you know, I'm going to have- Well, the work. second time around, I know I'm not going to die. I was just really worried about that. <laughs> and you know, you have type one diabetes that- that fear of death is actually not real. just you. It's everybody. Yeah, like like, I, I know I say everything kind of in a sarcastic, jokey voice, but it was real. I really was scared. <laughs> like, yeah, to convince her to do this, we're 12 weeks in and I'm like, I think you can do this. But then again, don't do it when I'm out of town. <laughs> I want to be around. <laughs> and then Jackson has my number. <laughs> and, and it's real because that equation is, I mean, it is a powerful teaching tool that um, I can't wait. My ketones this morning were 1.9 though. And see, that is the part of the metabolism that I couldn't do with exogenous uh, supplements. So again, we started out with uh, ketones in a can and then we added the MCT. And when you do a fast, what you did was stress all of those mitochondria to produce that uh, level of ketone on their own. And that is sustainable. That's where you say, wow, my energy level is still so much better after fasting. Wow, I can focus after fasting. And, you know, everywhere from back to the Bible, when you've got a problem, you know, for thousands of years, they've said, if you want to, if you want mental clarity, fast and pray. And it is amazing. You know, well, praying for you not to die was probably where your prayers were these for that fast. But the key is you you stressed your body to produce ketones at a much higher level than you ever had before. And I think that in and of itself is what is so exciting for me is to say, look at how advanced your metabolism is. You know, the other thing that I need to send a lot of praise for you is your mental focus and discipline to say no to food. Uh, I mean, I know that it took me six months to be able to say, could I, could I do this? Uh, so in 12 weeks, your brain has gone from, okay, could I possibly say no to food, you know, one meal a day? And you did great with that. But I mean, I can count on like less than two hands uh, how many people have done a 36 hour fast within the first six months of going keto. So I just need to say kudos for your discipline, for your commitment. And then your ability to just share it with everybody is powerful. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. you you're welcome. Been. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you're headed to a big conference uh, tomorrow in Vegas. What's that about? Uh, the um, little side business I do, um, I work with Monate. Mm -hmm. It's a hair care company. And so me and about, uh, you know, nine, I believe nine other girls that I do the business with are headed out there to join up with 
I think 4,000 other um, wow. Monate shampoo girls. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go take over Vegas and um, <laughs> nothing like hairdressers I taking Vegas have by storm. a bag full of ketones in a plastic bag in my carry on. And I'm interested to see what that conversation's like at security check tomorrow. <laughs> and <laughs> that white powder, it's really ketones. It's like my, you know, ketones, not no sandy. It may feel uh, like, you know, crack, you know, energy, but no, no, no. It's really just ketones. Yeah. I need to like watch my mouth and not say any of my jokes at that yeah, moment. No joking. Not. And, um, I got my, you know, friendly it's sitting over there on the ground. I can see it, but you guys can't, um, uh, my little frother to go so I can froth up my drinks. Yes. I think we'll be good. I think it'll be, it'll be fun. It's supposed to be 82 ish while I'm there. And that sounds amazing. So uh, yeah, South Dakota. Bye, South Dakota. <laughs> yes. So I'm actually going to brag on you a little bit. So Lackland not only does hair, but also runs this other business and recently took on a third job to try and make ends meet and be a single mom and pay bills and do all the things that all of us have to do. So I strongly encourage people to look at this website, Lackland at mymonet.com. And um, it's right there on the screen to support her because if, if she can't keep us on her schedule, then we don't get to do this every Sunday night. And I'll tell you, it is so many people have reached out to me saying, if she can do this without making insulin, I can do this. And your inspiration has been a very big part of many people saying, if a type one diabetic can manage this. And part of this is just having a coach checking in every week. And I want you to be able to selfishly, I want you to be able to keep this up because I, I learned too. like, uh, you know, there's only a few type one diabetics that I've done this with and, you know, they are, uh, they're a tough puzzle. And so as I have physicians reach out to me looking for answers, I point them to this playlist saying, look at this patient, look at what happened. Um, you know, last week when we took you to that float on, uh, you know, in the middle of that uh, fast, it is a powerful, you know, relaxant, improve your brain, to keep that muscle from cramping, all the things that a magnesium float will do. But there's one product that you have been really a, a superstar about helping me with, which is, uh, why don't you tell them about it? It's called Re Rejuvenique, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, what product? Oh, rejuvenic oil. That's mm -hmm. like, um, that's like cool. It's kind of like our mothership product. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's an oil and there's a hundred uses for it. You can use it on your nails, your skin. I use it as a makeup primer. You can do oil treatments on your hair. You can use it as a hair finisher. It's pretty much the bomb. Yes. And after basically I, the bomb, <laughs> it's in all of our had, products. It's amazing. I had it's been a favorite. <laughs> Yeah, after I had been to the float a few times, you looked at my hair and said, what are you doing? And I'm like, um, well, there's these really cool things called a float, but they're really drying to my hair. And you're like, yes, all right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you instructed me, this is what you need to be using in order to prevent yeah. that. And I can't tell you, it's been like within two treatments, you're like, wow, that's amazing. It looks like my hair is like 20 years old again. So <laughs> right? like, the, you know, the stuff we all took for granted at 20, um, but right. no, really, really great. And so, you know, taking to the float the, as we left the float together. And if that anybody night, has any uh, tips or tricks on how to use swim caps. <laughs> yeah, right. We both tried to use a swim cap to protect our hair, but we both came out of there with wet hair. So I don't know if swim caps actually keep your hair dry. I have little nieces and nephew, a little niece. Who, and she says, oh yeah, if you do it right, your hair stays dry. And I'm like, well, clearly I need oh, to watch no. the YouTube video. We need, to, we need to tell YouTube that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that didn't work. But she assures me that she swims and she keeps her hair dry. So, huh, all right. Anyway, well. What's ACV? Say it again. ACV. Oh, apple cider, cider oh, vinegar. Oh, apple cider vinegar. So the, what's the question? Um, oh gosh. Oh, it'll help with gout. I yeah, apple cider vinegar, what, what that's gout. doing is it's a pH shift. And so again, pH is about what your body balances. In a ketogenic state, your pH is already more alkaline because of the ketones. Um, you think ketoacidosis, um, you think, isn't it more acidic? And you're like, nah, don't do that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of parts of this that don't make intuitive sense until you look at some of the transporters for what intracellular versus extracellular fluid does. But again, that gout formation is uh, something that can flare when you first start on the ketogenic diet. 
um, as, but it is, it's not the enemy. Uh, that's a, a, you are actually headed back towards a healthier you, but you can really, you can flare a gout flare the first few weeks they go into a ketogenic state. It's not, it's another place though, where, you know, easing into the ketosis for people with advanced health problems. It's not something I talked about when I wrote the book at first, I used just, um, you know, cutting carbs and I was, you know, using me and my mom and my kind of close circle of patients that said, here's what I'm doing. And wow, uh, they, they did great, but I didn't recommend the supplements at that point. This now I absolutely do. I, I the blood brain barrier stuff where the mental fog gets, you know, clouds get away. They can focus through a craving, their mood gets better and their concentration gets better. And then they can start, you know, advancing the diet like you have. So let's actually make a plan because what you are going to be gone and you're not going to fast between now and then, but are you going to stick with one meal a day or how's that going to look when you're in Vegas? Um, yeah, I think that's my plan is to probably just stick with what I've been doing, regardless of what everybody else is doing. Right. I got to stick on my plan for me. So I'll just stick with my coffee and my teas and have one, one good meal a day. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you will, you, know? you will do well. Um, you are keto adapted. Even if you didn't, if you, if you did fast, which again, keep taking your insulin, uh, call me if you fast. But the, the point is, is that your brain is metabolically uh, adapted to that. So I, I would, I would say you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fun. Well, I am going to flip over and answer some comments. And I know when that happens that I can't hear you anymore. At least that's what I think happens. <laughs> so, oh, good for you. I, I will uh, say safe travels and we'll see you next week. And call me with trouble. <laughs> so she's saying goodbye. All right, so I am back with just a couple more things to go through. Um, yeah, I have been uh, looking at uh, adding some uh, other guests to the lecture, and I want to say thank you for all of those who have written in asking to be a guest. Um, it is uh, quite a commitment to get uh, up to speed to doing that, so just uh, be patient, and I am continuing to work on that. Um, other things that I uh, just want to say thank you for, you know, Lachlan actually is offline now, and that is her unbelievable commitment to using her journey to help patients. Um, you know, Lachlan is a single mom, and she fights uh, the good fight trying to do a good example while being, uh, you know, while being, you know, a type 1 diabetic and trying to do keto. Um, what she didn't talk about tonight was that her... Um, her son, uh, who is one of the reasons why she did this as well, he has continued to lose weight. And, you know, there's nothing more motivating for a mom uh, to say, look, my kids need a better example. And if I eat a certain way, I know they will eat a certain way. And uh, I can use that testimony in my family, but Lachlan has been using that in hers. You know, following her on Instagram is another way to give her support. Uh, just the words of encouragement. She really appreciates that. Again, uh, there's nobody else in her family that's keto. So she uses this channel and the support from Instagram. And again, any of you looking for a way to keep her as our guest, I just think there are so many teachable moments that she has provided for us uh, that I don't want to, I don't want to lose her as my Sunday night guest. And that in part is I can't have her taking on a fourth job. Uh, there'll be no time left to be a mom and to be, um, able to sit still on Sunday nights with us. So, um, again, I'm, thank you all for your comments. Uh, if you do, um, look, I actually will answer one question, uh, the, this one, um, by Grand Sue B. Uh, what about osteoporosis on keto? Again, um, one of the things that happens on a ketogenic diet is that you do get a surge of improved hormones. Um, this isn't something that happens accidentally. This is something that you can measure, uh, that when your body is improving its adaption, um, the adaptation doesn't just happen because you want it to. The adaptation happens, let me see if I can pull over this slide. Um, let's see. This is the one I want it to be on. Um, yeah, let's go to, uh, 
yeah, almost fits on the slide. <laughs> All right, so if I look at um, this, the Dr. Boz ratio. Uh, the Dr. Boz ratio is a powerful way to measure what your body is doing. So if you look at your glucose on one side and then your ketones on another, uh, I think that, or actually glucose on one side, what we're looking at is insulin um, along the bottom. Um, but your the Dr. Boz ratio looks at um, what your system um, allows um, or is doing. And we get a Dr. Boz ratio by taking your glucose and dividing by your ketones. Um, again, this is a blood meter that needs to be done with this. And the lower you get your Dr. Boz ratio, the more you're doing things like stimulating growth hormone, um, reducing the chronic cortisol, which again are very damaging on uh, aging bones. Uh, we look at osteoporosis and know that if I put you on prednisone, I can melt your bones over the course of uh, two years. Um, but you can do that on your own too by having chronically high cortisol. Um, we know that with a ketogenic diet, the longer they're on it, the more they are able to reduce the um, sugars and reduce um, and then raise those ketones, which then decreases that Dr. Boz ratio. So if you haven't looked into the Dr. Boz ratio, it is something that is very useful for you to use at home. Um, there's a meter in the show notes below that I think is a very good meter. Now there's a 10% discount for anybody who uses the Dr. Boz uh, for a coupon code. I highly encourage you to take your uh, health back into your own hands and, and really uh, take ownership of your um, of your health, but this is in part by measuring yourself. So if you're looking into osteoporosis, my mother had osteopenia when we started this. The last measurement of her bones showed an improvement over a three-year period, uh, and this is while fighting cancer on chemotherapy in her 70s, and it's because her Dr. Boz ratio is great. It is very low. It's usually under under 80 for sure, but often under 60 and frequently under 40. So she works really hard to keep those uh, hormones um, really producing at a much higher level than most 70-year-olds could, could do, and that's because of her advanced metabolic health. All right, so thank you again. Thank you for supporting my guest. I really want to keep Lacken on my Sunday night channel. I think she has a great teaching opportunity. I am going to sign off as Dr. Boz and say thank you for supporting my channel. If you haven't checked out my book, I would highly recommend it. Uh, gift it to your doctor if you're looking for a doc to to kind of shift their mindset. There's a lot of science in it, but it's also a pretty easy read. So again, we're signing off as Dr. Boz. We're helping your health one ketone at a time. That's a wrap.